The concept of CSV, creating shared value, comes from the Michael Porter and Mark Kramer's 2011 article in the Harvard Business Review. CSV takes the idea of corporate social contribution beyond philanthropy. With CSV, the new goal is for corporations and society to work together to create shared value. Recently, more and more Korean companies are adopting CSV as a management strategy. CJ Corporation established a separate department to better realize its goals of CSV-based management. It also announced a plan to work with society to create shared value. Min Hee Kyung was chosen to run the new global CSV department as its first executive vice president. Lately, many companies in Korea and abroad have been adopting CSV strategies. We find out why with Min Hee Kyung, Executive Vice President of CJ's Global CSV. So welcome to Heart to Heart, Ms. Min. You are here today as Executive Vice President of Global CSV at CJ Corporation. And CSV, creating shared value, is something that's been gaining a lot of traction in companies both in Korea and abroad. But for those of our viewers, and myself, of course, included, who don't really know what CSV means, could you please define that notion first? Uh, OK, the literal meaning is mm -hmm. that creating shared value, uh, which when company does some socially responsible activities, it not only helps society, but also helps the business. So it is a business strategy mm -hmm. which creates value for both company and the society. Mm -hmm. So I think most people are familiar with CSR, corporate social responsibility, and I guess the easy way of thinking it is as corporations giving back to society. What's the difference between CSR and CSV? Uh, CSR and CSV are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, we do both, my department or my team, uh, we do both CS, traditional CSR activities as well as CSV. Um, the main difference is that CSV comes out of company's profit. So company mm -hmm. first does their own business, mm -hmm. and after um, everything is done, then they usually um, do CSR activities through donations mm -hmm. or volunteering. Right. CSV is a really part of business, so from the uh, planning stage until implementation, um, the company and society coexist. Mm -hmm. So the business strategy, which, um, for example, it's a new business, but it not only maximizes company's profit, but it finds a like perfect solution mm -hmm. for both society and company benefit at the mm -hmm. same time. So really it's a win-win strategy yes. for both corporations yes. and communities. I think um, the term we use a lot is teaching them how to fish. Right. For instance, if CSR is giving them fish, CSV could be teaching them how to fish and at the same time also sharing the profits. Would right. that be a crude way of putting it? Yes, you, you may say that. Mm -hmm. uh, the well-known cases are all in a sense that, uh, for example, um, Nespresso, mm -hmm. Nestle's Nespresso case will be really one of those well-known examples. And in Africa, uh, Nestle uh, invest in irrigation. Mm -hmm. uh, they taught the farmers the better technology. And also, not only, only in farming, they built the schools for the villagers. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole uh, project resulted in Nestle getting a better quality coffee for their capsule coffee. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the villagers, um, you know, they have a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. So the benefits seem to be, um, especially for the corporations too, not only do they get profit, but they also manage to make sustainable ways of right. contributing to the community. Right. But <clears throat> Not to um, go too much into this point, but a corporation's main objective is to make profits. Right. No? So when you're changing the business model to this way, 
doesn't it somehow undermine its number one goal of trying to make as many profits or um, as much profit? There are reasons why corporations go uh, towards that direction. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is probably the society demands much greater or the larger responsibilities from the corporations. Mm -hmm. The corporations are uh, expected to take active roles in helping society's right. problems, mm -hmm. uh, which could be many, like a poverty, could be education. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't really help uh, corporation. I mean, it doesn't hurt corporation. It actually helps corporation to be sustainable for a long time because mm -hmm. the SNS society uh, everything is so transparent. Right. So being a transparent, um, the companies are required to do, do the right things anyway. Mm -hmm. So companies are constantly in the process of a finding a medium between doing the right thing and doing the most profitable thing. Mm -hmm. Now CSV only came about about three or four years ago, so it's a fairly the term, yes. new concept. So I might imagine there might there must also be some growing pains. Are you also running into some difficulties in pursuing CSV? For instance, are you running up against any critics who might say, what's the difference really between CSR and CSV? Or doesn't the corporation's goal of trying to make profits sometimes interfere with its goal of trying to help society or communities? Uh, the terminology mm -hmm. is fairly new, but the concept I don't think is new. Okay. All the good corporations, uh, including CJ, mm -hmm. Uh, our founding philosophy is contributing to the country and society. So we had the founding philosophy mm -hmm. and we were doing the business within the parameters. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's more um, of the people when they start to using the terminology than, as you said, it's a growing pain. Mm -hmm. The difference between CSR and CSV is in CSR, you, um, it's a, it's a one-time thing, and it really involves right. the people who are actually participating in that particular activity, whether it's a volunteering mm -hmm. or giving a donation. CSV has to be uh, integrated with the, the entire business process. Mm -hmm. So from the, um, the people who are actually coming up with a new product or a new market mm -hmm to the people who are implementation and marketing that particular product, everyone should understand and then everyone has to be synced and aligned. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. Um, the CSR, for example, if the top management believes in particular cause, right. then the company will do it. Mm -hmm. CSV, the top management has a vision, but the people who actually realize the vision at the working level mm -hmm. does not understand that you cannot make the CSV project. Mm -hmm. So it does take time. Mm -hmm. And um, interestingly, all those cases, well-known cases, were created before terminology CSV was created. Mm. So it was very handy to come up with the CSV. Yes. Well, I'm here with Min Hee Gyeong, the Executive Vice President of Global CSV at CJ. She was formerly a pianist, a financial expert, and a mentor to young women. And now, of course, she is leading the first CSV department at CJ. We'll hear more about how CSV is affecting our lives after this. Is that something then that only big corporations can pursue? Is it something that's also viable for smaller firms? Yes, uh, yes, there are many things that smaller companies can do. I think what's important is not to be tied upon by the, the name. Right. The idea that companies and society can create shared value is changing the world. So let's hear more about it with Min Hee Kyung. Ms. Min, um, I think some people might still, or we're getting a grasp of what CSV is, but maybe we can make it more easily understandable to our viewers with some concrete examples. You mentioned one example, of course, Nestle. Right. Are there any other examples, well-known or maybe not well-known, that you can also cite to help our understanding? Uh, the key word for CSV is innovation, sustainability, or something new. So um, at CJ, we do 
some we actually have uh, several of those products. Mm -hmm. um, CJ Jeljedang started the Center for Food Safety, and that cooperation center is really for small to medium-sized companies mm -hmm. the f in food industry. And we are sharing uh, CJ Jeljedang's experience and knowledge about the food safety to those small companies mm -hmm. who are not necessarily uh, be able to afford the developing their own mm -hmm. those technology. All those things are um, taking the stakeholder concept. Stakeholder concept is um, profit usually, the traditional corporation's profit goes to the shareholders. Mm -hmm. But in stakeholder concept, everyone's involved such as uh, mer merchandiser, our customer, mm -hmm. employees, right. whole society is bringing into our ecosystem mm -hmm. and we are finding uh, uh, some happy harmony for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, not to put you on the spot, but when mm -hmm. you talk about helping um, SMEs right. or other companies, may maybe through O-Shopping, and ultimately they have some business ties with CJ, mm -hmm. then helping them is ultimately helping right. yourself as yes. well, right? Yeah. So then by changing the name of the packaging, mm -hmm. in a sense, to CSV, is it sometimes, can it also misguide? Are these companies also allowed to um, supply goods to other companies as well, or is it only to CJ? Oh, that's a, um, that's a good question. <laughs> the one example that we do is uh, we, um, we have a lot of franchise business. Mm -hmm. We have a restaurant chain that runs as a franchise. And before, the franchise business uh, core competency is the education. Mm -hmm. And before those training and educations were only um, available to our own franchises, mm -hmm. we started another CSV project, which we do with the uh, government, Department of Labor. Mm -hmm. And in that program, it's for anybody who wants to do their, or open their own restaurant or a bakery. Mm -hmm. And after the training, uh, which we're not charging, they can stay to become our own franchisee, mm -hmm. or they can even go to our competitors wow. and then become the competitor's franchisee. Mm. So there are, we obviously run our own training program for our wannabe franchises. Of course. But at the same time, this particular program is for the service of the society. And the level of education that you provide the is the same. Probably better at the other <laughs> one. <laughs> Well, wow, that's almost taking on quite a risk. It seems that in taking um, CSV projects, it's almost taking a risk to the corporation itself. Yes. What, what prompted CJ to set up this CSV department? Um, I know that it's quite new. Mm -hmm. What prompted them? Because you already had quite extensive CSR activities beforehand. But why the sudden move? Um, the CJ had the 60th anniversary last mm -hmm. year. and. We look back um, what is truly uh, made the company successful. And that's uh, basically our vision and our uh, founding philosophy. Mm -hmm. That one of the very important philosophy is a coexistence. And then the coexistence with the society mm -hmm. and then with everybody who supports us. And SNS uh, prompted that environment as well. The companies are um, expected to be very transparent mm. and people are not only buying the products for their own pleasure alone they want to feel good and mm. then the feel good means that if they have everything being equal they want to buy the product that they think is ethically produced right. so that I think is a really good social trend mm -hmm. and um, we are we're actually doing what we've been doing mm -hmm. more mm. so Mm -hmm. Is that something then that only big corporations can pursue? Is it something that's also viable for smaller firms? Yes, uh, yes, there are many things that smaller companies can do. Mm -hmm. um, the, I can't really think of examples mm -hmm. uh, because I think for the smaller companies, the project for is more gray area between CSR and CSV. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's important is not to be tied upon by the, the name. Right. CSV only, um, as you said, it 
the most important thing is the sustainability. Mm -hmm. And the sustainability ensures or sustainability is what differentiates from CSR and CSV. CSR, mm -hmm. the company does not make money, then you know, the, you know, you, you're not expected to make mm -hmm. as much donation. Mm -hmm. But CSV, you are doing the same business anyway. Mm -hmm. And then the part of the benefit is a shared. Right. So uh, you're not really dependent upon the result of the business. Mm -hmm. So when we say it's a win-win strategy, once again, for corporations and society, corporations can gain more customers and also, of course, profits, and the community gets a sustainable partner in their growth as well, right. as well as profits on their side right. as well, wouldn't it? Hmm. Okay, I think I finally get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as part of uh, the CJ Group, which mm -hmm. CJ Corporation belongs to, really, you've done so much over the past 10 years, I know. And one recent project I think that I've heard is about is um, sponsoring 140 individuals and teams working in movies, broadcasting, right. and animation, of course, because culture is a big part um, of the CJ group's work. So we're talking about a significant contribution to the development of Korean cultural landscape. Is there a reason why CJ has been so focused on cultural contents and helping out in the cultural realm? Uh, from top all the way mm -hmm. down, uh, everyone at CJ believes that content is the future. And that reflects the, the chairman's philosophy. Mm. So that's uh, why we enter into cultural industry mm -hmm. or entertainment industry. And that's why we have been successful so far. And what really backed out that success is the cultural foundation. Mm. The cultural foundation, as you said, uh, the cultural foundation has a mission to uh, find and help them to be successful. Uh -huh. Those are the uh, with the the talent. So it's a talented artist in the industries that we are working, mm -hmm. uh, which are music, movies, and theater arts. Mm -hmm. And the one characteristics that we do differently from other foundation is that when usually the artists are supported mm -hmm. through getting some kind of um, grant or assistant, their right to their work uh, goes Usually to, taken that yes, to the foundation. Or, yes. to the foundation. Uh -huh. um, we help them to keep their rights to their mm -hmm. work, but we continuously mentor them. Mm -hmm. We are making them to be connected or network to the industry leaders, whether mm -hmm. it's a famous uh, director or a famous uh, producer. Mm -hmm. And then after their work is to be uh, a good enough stage, mm -hmm. then we um, create the, this forum or this place, so we call it market, where we invite everyone in the industry, all our competitors are there, and CJ is a competing as a one of those people who are trying to get the young artists to work. So whether it's this wow. movie scenario, when, you know, the, uh, the writer mm -hmm. is picking their partner mm -hmm. who's the most beneficial to him or her. So in a sense, we're growing the pie so that right. it becomes bigger for everyone to share as well. Okay. Well, the CJ Group has been involved in extensive CSR activities for the past year, and they've been involved in diverse areas. Let's take a look. In 2013, when the CJ Group adopted CSV as a core management strategy, it also established the CSV department. The Donors Camp is the company's representative CSV program. Since 2005, Donors Camp has run education programs for children in need. The goal is to help children succeed in the future by letting them explore a wide range of professions. The program is based on the idea that education can help lift individuals out of poverty. What sets Donors Camp apart from other organizations is its online donation site. 
The website is open to people outside the company, which makes it possible for regular citizens to contribute and participate. 많은 분들의 참여를 유도하고자 매칭 그랜트 펀드라는 걸 하고 있습니다. 구하시는 금액만큼 CJ가 같은 금액을 더해서 그 저희가 기부하는 공모방에 전달하는 시스템인데요. There's a simple new way to donate offline too. The Little Dream campaign makes donating as easy as buying something. Donations start as small as 500 won, and proceeds help pay for surgeries for children with facial disfigurements. 기부가 되게 편하게 저희가 물건 사듯이 기부할 수 있어서 되게 좋았던 것 같고 이런 기부된 금액이 아이들에게 행복하게 쓰일 수 있어서 저도 되게 기쁘게 구매했던 것 같습니다. These days, companies aren't simply making charitable donations. They're pursuing a strategy of CSV to help companies and society make progress together. We look forward to seeing the changes that the CSV programs will bring to our society. I've noticed that the Foundation has been very supportive of camps and educational programs. Is there a particular reason for that? Uh, CJ Welfare Foundation was founded mm -hmm. uh, right after the IMF crisis. And then at that time, uh, many moms had to go back to work mm -hmm. and the children were left alone. So we started to supporting um, after school community child centers mm -hmm. uh, throughout the area. And now we're supporting, there are about 4,000 uh, centers in Korea. We're supporting just about all of them. The, uh, the centers request to us whatever they want from mm -hmm. fuel to field trips to um, even English tutors. And within the budget, we uh, try to meet their request. Mm -hmm. So um, that we started with the, the belief that education is the most important thing to change. The children is allowed to have their own dreams and we're helping them to fulfill or achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. And as a mom yourself, have you ever experienced these, the need that these p children have as well? Have you personally experienced that? Yes, uh, I love to go to those camps. Yeah. I mean, they're so, that's just so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that uh, not always their dreams are very grand or big, but I think what's more important is not the size of the dream, but the process to achieve it. Mm -hmm. And we try to be the uh, implementation tools that they can rely on. Mm -hmm. And I think the, uh, trying to achieve their dreams is the most wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. So once again, you're teaching the children um, the way how to fish as well, how yes. to fish and yes. achieve their dreams. I think when it comes to CSR um, and corporate social responsibility projects or donations to society, there's almost a sense that it should be done privately or not so publicly mm -hmm. announced for it to appear more sincere. But after hearing you speak, I wish that actually more people and more corporations would be more public with the efforts that they're doing for society. Um, so how does your company and how do your team, how does your team balance that need to um, publicize what you're doing and also not to do it with so much fanfare that it can come off as being too insincere or just doing it for the public value? Uh, the foundation will be 10 years next year. Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking back, realize that uh, the evaluation on us, our work so far, there are, uh, we are very highly appreciated by the people in the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the teachers or the scholastic organizations, they love us. But the most of the, the general public didn't even know we existed. Yeah. Um, we probably start to pay a little more attention or we probably put some more conscientious efforts about letting people know what we do. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because we want the more recognition, but I think we want more people to join us in doing such good things. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, 290,000 individual members. And then uh, we do the uh, one on dollar for dollar matching. 
So I want more people to realize their desire mm -hmm. to do the nice thing or mm -hmm. good work mm -hmm. uh, with our foundation. How do you plan to conscientiously publicize or do more like SNS you mentioned before too? Because SNS is so widespread, right. people are always looking at SNS and exchanging information and opinions. Could that be one way? Uh, that's one way, that's mm -hmm. definitely. We're actually asking our members to be more actively involved. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one way, because the more you get involved, the more you talk about. Word We're, of mouth, yes. Right. And also, before we um, purposely did not put our foundation name or a title uh, in some of the camps that we do, mm -hmm. but now we are naturally, um, we're not advertising in a big way, mm -hmm. but when we do our activities, we use our logo or mm -hmm. su such simple things like that. Mm -hmm. I heard that Gi Sormang, yeah. when he was once in Korea, he mentioned that Korea, you know, we do a lot to help out other countries and the corporations have been very involved in helping out communities in Korea and abroad. But when it comes to individuals, maybe just mm -hmm. individual members of society, mm -hmm. it seems to be that we're lagging behind the corporations and the government. What is your take on that? I just cop popped up with that question. Um, I might have a slightly different view on yeah. that. Uh, I think uh, the, the Korean, even as an individual, probably not as uh, involved in those uh, giving activities mm -hmm. as uh, people from other country. I think culturally we are more, uh, we believe that if you advertise or if you tell what you do, mm -hmm. then the people start questioning the sincerity right. of what you do. So because of that, you know, it's, it's a very fine line even for the corporations, mm -hmm. but I personally think that the Koreans are as, you know, warm-hearted people as anyone else. Mm -hmm. So we're big givers, but we just don't advertise the fact yes. that we're giving. <laughs> okay. I think uh, we'd like to now talk about a little your mentoring role, because, mm -hmm. of course, many viewers, especially in Korea, know you as the mentor for especially young women. And before you became into your... Before you came into your current role as executive vice president of Global CG, CSV, you were well known as a mentor to many youth and employees. And I know that you've given many talks as well. Quite, we can't ask for a full talk here, but in your talks, what are some of the main values that you stress? To, because many people look at you and they want to, they aspire to become like you. What are some um, values? I think it was, uh, I was talking about the right thing at the right timing. <laughs> uh, what I believe about the leadership is mm -hmm. the leadership is a bringing, uh, bringing out the best of people. Mm -hmm. And that directly relates to the diversity as well. Mm -hmm. So I always believe the more diverse the group, the better the synergy is. And I think in this career's changing society, you know, the men, male, female, mm -hmm. and different ethnicity. Well, for the first time we are actually forced to work with the people that are not exactly the same as you. Right. So I think in that sense, um, I really believe in diversity. Diversity thrives in open-mindedness, humility. So these are the same common uh, trait of leaders or a good person anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I, emphasize the same thing. Probably one more thing that I emphasize these days might be <clears throat> more of a perseverance or a spirit of a hungry. Uh, the hungry spirit, yes. the hungry tongshin, yes. right? Mm -hmm. As a female manager, of course, you're one of the few women who have really risen to the top of Korean corporations. And in that respect, I think you also garner a lot of respect. You've mentioned leadership and you also touched upon the male and female, but as a female manager, as a woman who's at the top of her industry, does it take an extra set of something to rise to the top and stay at the top? Uh, I think women need more time. More time? Yes, I think, you know, uh, it's just that I don't necessarily think that there is some general traits like male manager, mm -hmm. female manager. Um, 
there are some tendencies, and then I, I think those tendencies are not necessarily from being female, mm -hmm. but it's more from mom who has an added responsibility. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not going to generalize, but I think you know I'm very happy that we are in a process of uh, mobilizing every resources we have, <laughs> including women. Right. You're very familiar, of course, with Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In book and how she received quite a lot of flack for suggesting that it's up to the women to really lean in and make the most of what they've got and stop leaning back and putting themselves out of the game. What did you think of her sort of her claim that it is really up to the women? Of course, you need a partner at home and you need support in the workplace and probably from policies, government policies as well. But almost it boils down to the woman itself, your attitude. Do you share that? Uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed reading that book. Mm -hmm. And then I get a lot of questions from young women in my organization, mm -hmm. what I thought. And my advice was don't do what she says you should. <laughs> so, uh, but at the same time, uh, if I were given the exactly same question, um, like maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I probably have given the different answer. Uh, my answer is now I'm like, I've seen more cases. So um, I think Lean In, that book, mm -hmm. is as valuable as many other books that mm -hmm. all these successful women wrote. But at the same time, I think every life is very important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's good to read the book from someone like Sarah Sandberg. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you know, listening to your mom, how she lived the woman's life. And I think that's also helpful to being a women manager. Mm -hmm. uh, it's everything is about people. Mm -hmm. So I think the people and then everything, everyone has a different life. Right. Um, I think I grown to respect more mm -hmm. of re true diversity. Right. So, I mean, Cheryl Sandberg just came out with Lean In a couple of years ago, but you came out with a book, um, well, less than ten years ago, but eight years ago in '96. I don't know how to quite translate it into English, but it's Namdaram Perigo Anidara. Uh, I don't know, men, um, nothing to fear or not so much to fear. I'm yeah. not sure that's an accurate translation. But what was the message that you wanted to convey through your book? I think at that time I really wanted to say other women uh -huh. that you have to be more aggressive. Uh, lean in. No? Lean in, yes. Uh, and at that time, that probably worked because women were a minority. Hmm. And in the workplace, and now, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, many of the work culture uh, is the same. But I think there are more female, uh, more very capable women right. at workplace. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take, you know, the same approach as that I took at that book. In some ways that even the title at that time, I wouldn't name the book like that now. <laughs> you said that a lot has changed since you wrote that book and that you might even want to change the title. But I think maybe a lot of women might disagree. They would think that Korea still lags behind many other countries when it comes to equality in the workforce, chances for, for promotions, etc. So. Could you be more specific in which ways that we have made progress and maybe some areas where we still need to work on? Okay. Mm. Um, I hope this answers to your question. The many ha has changed in a sense that the women have more choice, even in their career. I guess when I was writing that book, the people who stay in Korea or are having career, mm -hmm. uh, you have to continuously work, there is only one way to go forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you are not really successful, then there is no place for you, whether at least in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And now there are many diverse work, uh, different levels, different careers. There is no jobs that the women cannot do because you are women. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, many has changed. I think 
that's a more macro scene. Mm -hmm. On a micro scene, you know, as you said, women are still facing the same difficulties. Uh, what I said before is that before it was a women thing, now it's probably more individual thing. In some ways it makes it even harder on an individual level. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers the question. It does, and I think when you mentioned that it's not a, a, an issue or a problem for women now, it's mm -hmm. more of a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. It kind of reflects what um, Anne-Marie Slaughter um, mentioned that it, has, it shouldn't be a feminist revolution, it should mm. be a humanist yes. revolution and everyone mm. has to become involved in not only earning money but also caring for mm. loved ones and caring for our family members and we become better as a society. I think there will always be uh, challenges for someone who wants it all. Yeah. Uh, there is a personal compromise you will have to face daily basis. Mm -hmm. Now women are allowed to have a career. Mm -hmm. And then the next stage that we, the CJ has been doing since the last year about, is about the returnship. And that's for the people who took a time off yeah. to start the family or you know, take care of the small children mm -hmm. to go back to the career. Mm -hmm. um, I was uh, lucky enough to be a housewife for a while and then was able to go back to work. I started from the bottom, but the time off was at actually the, one of the most valuable time in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it was a time to think about my life, what I wanted to do or mm -hmm. what I liked. When I went back, I was able to try different things because I was starting from bottom anyway. I might as well try something really different. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, I was lucky enough to do all those things, but I think there should be more people who would like to try different things in their life mm -hmm. and were, was, they should be able to do that. So that's the returnship is one of those things that you take a time off, mm -hmm. which is very important when mm -hmm. the, the nicest thing was to stay home for a year or two with yeah. the small children mm -hmm. and then go back and when you are ready, you commit yourself 100% to your job. Mm -hmm. So that's the, what returnship is about and that's what the women should be able to have uh, those, um, it's not a freedom, but it's a option. Option, yes. because many studies by global corporations and consulting companies, I think they've all confirmed recent studies that corporations with more f women both as employees and also on the executive level, they do better than other firms that do not have as much women on every level of profitability. I want to say more happy women. And happier women. <laughs> happier women means happier families, yes. happier society. Well, it's said that in this age of culture and the age of sensibility, Miss Min covers both. She's been an artist and also a financial expert, and now she's leading the way in the exciting new realm of CSV. We took a look at the executive vice president's very busy day. Ms. Minnie Gyeong has another busy day ahead of her as the Executive Vice President of the CSV Department. Where does she get the strength to do everything? What motivates her? As usual, she had a lot of meetings to attend. This one was about making CSV programs more effective in creating jobs and reviving small and medium-sized companies. Ms. Min was able to offer up many new ideas. It helps that she brings a wealth of experience to her job, having lived and worked in different countries. CSV랑 접목 안 되는 거는 하나도 없거든요. 제가 사실 다양한 직업도 다양했고 어, 산 여러 군데서 좀 많이 이사를 많이 다녔었는데 그런 모든 경험을 하나도 안 빼놓고 다쓸수 있는 데가 지금 제가 현재 하는 일이라서 저는 너무 감사합니다. Busy as she is, 
Ms. Min always tries to make time for students who ask her to lecture about CSV. 요새 젊은 어, 학생들이 어, 이런 그 사회적 책임이라는 거에 대해서 굉장히 많이 관심이 있는 것 같아요. 그래서 개인적으로도 어, 봉사 활동도 많이 하고 그런 거를 학, 학교 때부터 좀 공부를 하고 그리고 직장을 어, 나중에 직장을 찾게 되면 훨씬 더 좋은 사회가 될 것이라고 생각합니다. The students in the audience were not economics or business majors. But still curious about CSV. From Ms. Min, they learned all about the new management strategy that's gaining prominence throughout the world. CSV can have a positive effect not just on a student's future, but on society as a whole. We hope that Ms. Min's work will help CSV take root in Korean society. I'm here with Min Hee Kyung, EVP of Global CSV at CJ. Ms. Min, let's talk a little bit about your start, how you started this great career. As we mentioned, it's very varied. You were actually a music musician, a pianist, and then you went into finance, and now you're here at CJ with CSV. You studied music in college, SNU, uh, and then you decided to switch tracks when I think you went to the U.S. on a scholarship that you received for your music. And then you moved another switch after 10 years, and you now are in a big corporation, CSV. It's rare for any individual to make such ra radical changes, but for a woman to do so, and a homemaker at that, I think is even more remarkable. So I guess my question is twofold. How are you able to make such radical switches? Is it something, you, you mentioned people before, so I'm wondering if it's the personal network that you had, or is it something just a personal characteristic? And then the second question, I guess, would be, there must have been so many difficulties as a woman, as an Asian woman, more so. So maybe you can answer those two questions for us. The first part question I'm always <laughs> asked. Yes. Uh, I usually disappoint others with the answer. Uh -huh. That uh, I studied music for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when it's about the time that I have a career, graduating from college, I thought that I'd be better at business. And then I thought I would give a try. Let me just stop you right there. Is it because your career in piano did not look promising? Did you have professors or people saying to you, you know, you're a good pianist, but you'll never be a great pianist? Is that why? That too, oh. yes. That is a very important. I mean, that's a big part of the reason. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the reason is the lifestyle. Uh -huh. And But um, in business, I realized how much I learned from uh, studying music. Mm -hmm. Um, I learned the value of tenacious mm -hmm. and working hard. Practicing piano for a long time is not fun. <laughs> um, but I think you, you are learning that without those mundane process, you cannot achieve your target or mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. So that is probably the most valuable thing. The other thing is really being a woman helped. I had a uh, no expectation, no high expectations on me or from family to be uh, successful in, let's say, corporate world. Mm -hmm. So I did what I want to do, and I love to work, so I just worked hard. And I think I was just able to uh, move up little by little, which was good enough for me. Did you have mentors helping you, or is I it that you just worked harder than other women or other men? I always had a mentor. Okay. Um, you know, these days that I say three things that if you want to have a successful career, mm -hmm. particularly in corporate world, I tell that you have to have a three type of good people around you. One is obviously you have to have a mentor. Mentor is someone who is that you can psychologically rely on or lean in. Mm -hmm. um, but then there is a sponsor. Sponsor is the people that 
usually your boss, right. but who really takes personal interest mm -hmm. of your development and not necessarily promoting you mm -hmm. or putting you in a so-called good department, yes. but always make sure that you're learning what you're supposed to be learning at your stage. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is uh, your friend, competitor, someone you're about the same level, mm -hmm. but you know, you don't have to call that person as a competitor, but you can gauge yourself to that person. Right. And then I think you're constantly, you're not really competing, but you're always like, make sure that, oh, you know, that person learned those things mm -hmm. and then he's doing it that way or mm -hmm. she's doing it that level and then maybe I should. So there is a formal process of giving a feedback and evaluation, but also I guess the your Peer, development. Yes, just yes. looking at your peers and see how they're doing. But I'm interested by the, the concept of sponsor because I think especially with Korean societies, we all know about mentors and the value of colleagues and your peers, but sponsor seems to be quite a, a novel term or that sometimes is it's just taken a, a different way. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I, with the, the difference between a sponsor and a mentor is a sponsor takes a more vested interest in you. They will maybe sometimes even stake their reputation by sponsoring you, right. by saying, attesting to your credibility or to your skills. And they will they'll put themselves out there for you as well. Is that right? Right. Uh -huh. um, you know, good corporations, they have a, a, the grooming process. Mm -hmm. And then in the grooming process, whether you call sponsor or not, <laughs> yeah. there's a someone who actually believes in you mm -hmm. that if they properly grow, I mean properly um, nurtured, this person become a good manager or a good leader. Mm -hmm. And then sponsor actually makes sure that whether that person is in right TF team or doing the right project, or make sure that you're you know, acquiring the skills mm -hmm. or the competence that right. you need to. Mm. Well, as the last question, um, you've done so much and you're continuing to do so much. And of course, you're still a wife and a mother. I have to ask you what is in, the, what it is in your plans for the future as, as a wife, as a mother, but also, of course, as EVP. Um, I'll start with the smallest one as a smallest or the most important <laughs> mother. Um, I want to be healthy enough so that I want to take care of my grandchildren when my, <laughs> when my daughter goes to work. Uh -huh. So that's, uh, that's a long term, but that's the most important thing. Um, on a personal level, I feel more and more responsibility as a, uh, the women, um, the businesswoman. Mm -hmm. um, there are many things on a personal level as well as to make policies or advice on a more macro level mm -hmm. to more gender-friendly work environment in Korea. Um, I think the, the culture lacks the regulation. Regulation moves forward the culture. Mm -hmm. So on that side, I want to make a little more contribution. Um, and my current job as a CSV, I want to be obviously the CSV leader in, among Korean corporations and also recognized globally. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, um, I, I want the uh, CJ to become global company mm -hmm. through CSV. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal. So lots of goals, and I wish you the best of luck in them. And I hope that you'll find time to come join us again and tell us how those goals are coming along. Yes, I would love to. Thank you very much. Thank you for sparing the time today. Thank you. And that was our conversation with Min Hee Kyung, Executive Vice President of Global CSV at CJ. You can watch a repeat of this program on our website, arirangtv.com. Until next time, bye-bye.